Okay, in this video, we are going to do 1994 number three from the AP Calculus AB exam. Um, and it's a question that's all about implicit differentiation. And um, I think we're going to be successful. So let's, let's see what we can do. Part A, write an expression for the slope of the curve at any point x, y. So a more modern version of this uh, would be like show that dy dx equals a particular thing. Because if, if B and C are going to depend on A, you'd better get A right, right? Um, and so I think the people who've written the test have gotten a little smarter about that over time, making their life a little easier. So we're going to take the derivative of this side with respect to X. We're going to take the derivative of this side with respect to X. I think you should show this step because I think it will save you from making a mistake. Um, and the mistake is that you forget to take the derivative of a constant and get zero. Ugh, so so many times. Uh, word of warning on this one, right there, that's a product, so we need the product rule. That's, that's really like the only warning. So the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. The derivative of the product is first, derivative of the second, so the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. So first derivative of the second plus second, derivative of x with respect to x is one, plus, the derivative of y squared, so the derivative of something squared is two times that thing, times the derivative of that thing, which is dy dx, and then it will equal zero. And what I usually do is move everything that doesn't have a dy dx to one side, and then everything with the dy dx I leave on the other side, and factor, and blah, blah, blah. So no dy dx, no dy dx. So I'm gonna get minus two x minus y over, uh, the coefficients of dy dx are x plus 2y, so over x plus 2y, and that equals dy dx. So that's my final answer, but all of the work is required. So I'm just highlighting it to let you know that that's where I think I'm done with this. I'm not like boxing my answer or anything because the entire thing is the answer. Okay. Determine whether the lines tangent to the curve at the x-intercepts of the curve. So at the x at the x-intercepts, y is equal to zero. If y is equal to zero, then this thing becomes a thing. Uh, our parallel show the analysis. Okay, so let me let me write down what I was thinking there. I was thinking x-intercepts means that y is equal to zero. So if y is equal to zero, then this let me bring this down. X, Y plus Y squared equals, uh-oh, kind of moving some things. Get out, get, okay, hold on. I accidentally like copied something and then I, I don't even know. You don't need to know. There's a lot going on. It's not really a lot, but I was messing up. All right, so I'm gonna replace every, uh, if Y is equal to zero, then Y is equal to zero, Y is equal to zero, we just get, x squared equals 27, so x, you can leave it as radical 27. Um, I'm gonna say plus or minus, radical 27, I'm gonna use radical three root three. But you can leave it as radical 27, like there's no need to do what I did. Uh, so keep that in mind. So the ordered pairs, um, so our ordered pairs are gonna be three root three comma zero, and then negative, what? Negative three root three comma zero. All right, so those are our ordered pairs. And now what we wanna do is we wanna see if the tangent lines are parallel. So we're gonna take both of those and sub them in here. So I'm gonna borrow, well, not really borrow, but I'm gonna duplicate that down here and then uh, maybe get rid of my highlighting. So I wanna do uh, dy dx such that Eh, all right, what do I want to do? I'm going to pull this off to the side a little more and then just say, so dy dx such that three root three comma zero is uh, x, so negative two times three root three and then minus zero over three root three and then plus zero. So that's just uh, whatever that is, negative two dy dx such that negative three root three comma zero 
is going to be negative 2 times negative 3 root 3, and then minus 0 over negative 3 root 3. And then this is negative 2. Therefore, the tangent lines at the x-intercepts are parallel. So if we had gotten different slopes, they would have not been parallel. I mean, it's like pretty straightforward conclusion, but you know, got to think it through. Find all the points on the curve where the tangent line, the lines tangent to the curve are vertical. All right, so uh, if you've been doing uh, in order the videos, you we keep running into this question. Tangent lines vertical means that the slope of the tangent line is undefined. If the slope of the tangent line is undefined, the denominator of the derivative is equal to zero. So tangent lines vertical means x plus 2y equals zero. So I'm going to kind of write something up about that. So I'm going to say if uh, tangent line is vertical, then uh, x plus 2y, I'm going to say then x plus 2y equals zero. And why is that? That's the denominator of derivative. I could have written denominator of dy dx, but whatever, I decided to write derivative. So that means that x is equal to negative 2y. All right, now, so that's, that's a relationship from the derivative. I need another thing to like plug into so I can actually solve something. I'm going to use this x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 27. I feel like I had copied that at some point. Well, I did, but then I wrote all over it. So x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 27. I'm going to take this with us. And what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute our relationship. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with negative 2y. And we'll get a thing that we can work with. And then uh, that'll give us the y coordinate, but we need the x coordinate, but x is just negative 2y. So this will be negative 2y squared plus negative 2y times y plus y squared equals 27. So 4y squared minus 2y squared plus y squared equals 27. This, if you just did the previous video, which I think was like, 1981, 79, something like that. This is like almost the exact same question. This is part of why it benefits you to just as many free response questions as you can do. You end up doing like essentially the same question over and over again. In fact, I think this might be, uh, well, no, I guess not. I was gonna say it might be like the same answer. Getting plus or minus three for y, and then x is equal to negative two y. So if y equals 3, x is negative 2 times that, so negative 6. If y equals negative 3, x is negative 2 times that, which is positive 6. So uh, what are we looking for? I found the ordered pairs. Find the points on the curve where the tangent lines are vertical. All right, so we need the ordered pairs. So points, points on curve with vertical tangent lines are, and we'll write them as ordered pairs, negative six, three, and positive six, negative three. And there we go. All right, I think that that is the entire question. So vertical tangent line, pretty common. Horizontal tangent line, for whatever reason, is less common. That's just the numerator equals zero, and then you go through the same process, basically. Um, a weird question about the tangent lines at the x-intercept. So you have to know like x-intercept. It's actually, it's, it's not like a small step when, when you're reading a problem and you're under this time crunch to like read x-intercept and be like, that's a point on the curve. That's when y is equal to zero and like go for that. So be on the lookout for that. They'll tell you x-intercept, y-intercept, things like that. And then uh, this, is, this is your standard thing. All right, so that is all of 1994. A, B, number three. I know it's way in the past, but uh, the math is still relevant. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.